Welcome to Unlocked, the home of common sense, with me, Martin Daubney. Well, fishing is back in the news again. Is it ever out of the news? And here we are in a strange position. Remainers suddenly care about the British fishing industry because they're saying, hey, look, it's all going a bit wrong, guys. The shellfish industry in Scotland is struggling. Prices are down. The fish markets are open. Even Nicola Sturgeon's getting involved. And what we could do at this point is ask some politicians. But no, we thought we'd ask our own resident experts, people who live and breathe fishing and understand it better than any bureaucrat. And of course, those people are June Mummery, friend of Unlocked. Hi, June. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you, Martin. Hello and hello, everybody. It's Great to, to see you. my boy. And also Paul Lyons, another friend of Unlocked, chairman of the Lower Stop Fish Market Alliance. Paul, how are you doing, matey? I can see you bobbing on a boat there, sir. Yeah, I'm good. I'm tied up in Yarmouth River today, and that's a gl in glorious sunshine. Looks great down there, matey. Looks great. So let's go straight in. June, three big events this week. First of all, there was the spectacle of seeing up to 50 HGVs going around Parliament Square, and they had on the side Brexit carnage, protesting about the state of the market in Scotland. June, what was all that about? Well, there's a series of, uh, of what's happened with the carnage. But, I, but today I'm going to let Paul explain to the people exactly what is going on, what this carnage is, and also what Paul is going to describe to everyone today, because lots of people are asking me lots of questions about the deal. You know, the questions, the type of questions I'm getting is, well, you know, June, after five years, we take back control of our waters. No, we don't. So I'm going to leave the, 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 the two meaty, juicy bits to Paul um, to explain, because, you know, Paul is a fisherman of 40 years. He understands the markets. He understands quota. And he really does understand this dreadful deal that Boris has got for coastal communities in the UK. So, so actually, Paul, I think I'm going to hand that straight over to you, that question, if you can let our great British public know exactly what's going on. No frills, no trills. Let's just say it as it is, Paul. Well, the situation why uh, a lot of truck drivers and fishing companies and processors are demonstrating in London is because they've bought catches off trawlers, Peterhead, Aberdeen, Scotland. They've processed that catch. They've loaded it ready to ongoing, like they've done for years and years and years, to the continent. When they get to the ferry terminal, there's all sorts of paperwork that ain't filled in right, that they won't accept this, they won't accept that. And that fish lay rotten in them trucks because, quite honestly, the French don't want it to go. They're, they're not playing the game. We gave everything up to get a deal for free trade, with no messing around, but there's been more messing around. They are sick and tired of losing their income and seeing all the hard work thrown away. It's disgusting. The government need to grow a set of balls and face up, and they should have done this. They should have done this months ago, and they should have had trial runs with the French. What's going to happen? But no, they've done nothing. And then they now expect the brunt to be borne by processors. But that put aside... Most people won't understand what that deal is. Well, the actual deal, in essence, is the fact that they've assessed that Europe catches 146 million pounds worth of fish in our waters, which represent 60 percent of their landings. We, over five years, are going to take 25 percent back of that 60 percent. We're not getting an uplift of 25 percent in TAC. And in most cases, it will be very, very little uplift because it's a monetary value. It's not a fish value. No one know how this fish was valued. They haven't discussed that yet. But after five years, we have the right to tell them to leave our waters. But if we do so, we will have to pay tariffs and we will have to compensate the foreign fishing fleet. No government in the world has got to do that. It's an absolutely disaster for Great Britain's fishing industry because what's happened is the French, the Dutch, the Belgians, the Danes, they all come catch enough fish for their domestic market in our waters. They don't want our fish. Why would they want our fish depressing prices on their market? We're not a member of Europe now. They don't have to have it. And they're not going to. COVID 
has closed restaurants. It's closed every outlet for fresh fish down. They are catching and supplying enough for what, what they need on the continent. They don't want okay. ours. They don't Paul. need so, it. So, 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 Paul, hang on. So, if our government had a backbone and had, on January the 1st, taken back full control of our waters and the resource... They would be starved of fish now, wouldn't they? Well, they, they would... would. We were led the same old rhetoric from Gove and Boris Johnson and the likes that we were going to take back control and we were going to take and rule our waters. That would have worked because we'd have created the hunger in their markets for our fish. But no, we didn't. We just gave it all to them. We changed nothing. And I, I put this deal akin to if I was selling a car. And the person buying that car start kicking the tires and they think, oh, I ain't got to sell this. I'd say to him, I'll throw the lawnmower in. Well, the fishing industry was the lawnmower on that deal because mm. that's absolutely disgusting that one sector who were the poster boys of the Brexit campaign, they were the poster boys of the Conservatives re-election. And when I actually come to it, kick him in the teeth. Look at that Mr. Goove. He, he he made a huge point in telling everyone how he was so sorry his father's business failed and he was taken from a children's home and he was adopted and he looked up to the fishing industry. Well, all he ever did was got in power, got there and poked every fisherman right, in the eye with a stick. Paul, let, that's let, what let, let me, Paul let, let me interject. There's somebody else who's waded in and got involved. Of course, it's Nicola Sturgeon. Nicola Sturgeon this week tweeted a picture of an empty fish market in Peterhead. I think we can see that image on the screen now. And she said in a tweet, the reality of Tory Brexit and this for the industry they claimed to see would see such big benefits. Utterly shameful. And she's saying a sad sight. Europe's biggest fish market is like a ghost town. Can you explain to us why we are seeing markets so quiet like this. Is it Brexit or is it something else? COVID. Martin, I don't think it's Brexit. I think that's supply and demand. I mean, June run a fish market. There is not a great lot of demand for fish at the minute. Perfect, no. Because the hospitality industry is closed. Pubs are closed. Everything is shut down. We're in the middle of a huge pandemic. You couldn't have got a worse set of conditions for the fishing industry. But Nicola Sturgeon is probably right. The Tory Brexit deal was absolutely disgusting. It just laid waste to whole coastal communities. We, we were working hard, and I've been working very hard with my son, and I know other people who were told to invest, get boots ready, we need to catch this fish. There is no more fish. You know, there is no golden opportunity. They gave it away as a deal sweetener. And all they're doing now is they're throwing a stick and plaster out to the mm. processing industry to try and heal it. But then you'll never heal that rift there. You've got to have think, some major... Paul, Paul, I think it's a key point to make here. It's a key, key point. These problems aren't because of Brexit. It's because we didn't get the correct kind of Brexit for the fishing no. industry. We were no. promised a clean break. We were promised to take back control of our waters. What's happened... It's a kind of neither here nor there Brexit, where the French can still come and plunder our waters. And hey, presto, they don't want to buy English, British fish because they can just take what they need themselves. Is that right? Well, they're getting all they ever need to supply their domestic market with their own vessels. Mm. Well, why would they want our fish on their market as well, depressing them prices? Mm. I mean, they wouldn't. I mean, that's common business sense, isn't it? If you, if you supply what the market needs, you maintain the price. Mm. But, I mean, our fish plowing into their market will just depress their price. Well, they're fishermen. They aren't stupid. And also in France, they operate a minimum withdrawal price. Mm. So fishermen know what they've got to catch as a minimum. We don't do that here. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the whole thing was poorly thought out. That weren't thought through. You have to create a marketplace and create the need for product but you can't then give it to the enemy. And we see the continent as the enemy now because this is a battle. This this is not going to stop. No. I mean, that's not only a battle against the EU. That's now a battle to make our government see sense. They've handled this appalling. You know what Good. I mean? Now, now, now Paul, Boris I, I, I want to I interject again there, Paul, because I want to keep this short and tight. June, we're all about solutions on Unlocked. And I know you've got a plan out of this, haven't you? June, how can we sort this mess out? 
Now, some, yeah, this has all happened. It's a disaster. They've made huge mistakes. Nobody, I think, in government has read that deal. We, we know Victoria Prentice didn't read that because she was busy at an activity play. So that's happened. This has happened. There's good parts. We have left the EU. And I am so happy about the, the gains we've had. Look at the vaccine, et cetera, et cetera. But as fishing goes, and if we, if we want to hang on to the industry we have, because five years is a long time when you have nothing. We're on our knees. We've waited 40 years. And we, we, quite frankly, a lot of people will pack up, including myself. I've got no fish, but there is a plan. And this plan is to reinstate the 1988 Merchant Shipping Act. If we reinstate that, 54% of UK quota, which may I add, is a public asset, so that belongs to you, Paul, myself, and the rest of our country, if we take that back, that will keep us going until we get down the road to those five years. The hundred million pounds that we've been offered is peanuts as an insult. That wouldn't even build Fleetwood back. It wouldn't build Lowestoft back. It, it, that's no money at all. So what Mr. Johnson and co can do, and they must do, is reinstate that act. as Margaret Thatcher's act that she wanted to, re that she wanted to reinstate. And that is the only hope we have. Can you explain to the to unlock viewers, June, what precisely what that means and what would that act unlock if it were to be changed? How would it benefit British so, people? Yeah, yeah, yes, I will. Paul, I'm gonna hand that one over to you because yeah. she's your baby. You know that back to front that factor ten case. In the uh, in the mid eighties, what happened was foreign vessels started buying Foreign companies started buying up British quota, British vessels. They called them quota hovers. Margaret Thatcher made an act in 1988 that stopped this so that you had to be domiciled and the money had to be domiciled to buy that boat, buy that quota. What then happened was the European Supreme Court overruled that in a case called Factor Time. And they said that was unlawful. Right. Well, there's 54 percent. That's more than half of the TAC that this great country received is in foreign hands. Well, them boots that are catching that fish are British boots, but they're going back to the continent. No, right? There's no problem with them. They're catching it. They're going back and landing British fish straight into Europe. And that's being absorbed. Well, the fisheries bill that's just been written and had royal assent through Parliament, it states in there, that they are going to strengthen the economic link and make them land 70% of that fish in Great Britain. Mm. Well, if they was to bring that forward and do that now, and then slowly start taking that back for British companies had the benefit of that fish, that would turn the cards on this export problem because them foreign boots won't be able to get their fish. If the markets won't accept them, but they'll accept fish directly off the boots, that would just show what a what an absolute mess and what a game they're playing with us. And I told the fisheries minister the other day, until they start playing tit for tat on this silly little game the Europeans are playing with us, we're going nowhere bar down the drain. There's a oh, whole oh. sea of opportunity there with that 54%. That should have been done now. It should have been part of the negotiations. It should have been part this. We're the only country within Europe that let quotas be sold to non-nationals. Okay, Paul, that's Paul, Paul, that's that's a superb point. You talk to the fisheries minister, you're giving it to him straight. That's great to hear. Now, June, I want to get, as I always do from you, two things. First of all, what's the mood on the ground in the coastal communities? Is there political anger? Is there a will to change? And secondly, as we always do, message for Boris Johnson. Well, uh, the, the, the message on the ground at the moment with the fishing industry and coastal communities, I, I, I can't tell people enough, it's not just about fishing. It is about coastal communities that are deprived. I mean, we've got Rishi Sunak uh, on Thursday doing a, um, a Twitter something or other um, with various entrepreneurs about jobs. We've just handed thousands of jobs away we've given them away martin you can't get your head around it like i've said if you could rebuild the industry one job at sea is eight on land i'm not making these figures up 
That is fact. So my message to Boris today is, Boris, you've made a pig's ear of this. You have messed up badly. Now, well, they call him, they're not calling him Boris anymore. They're calling him Edward. You know, he, Mr. Heath, Mark II, that's his, new, his name. He's, he's, he's messed up. Now, the, what he can do is reinstate that act, Martin. He has to do that because we will not survive five years if it isn't done. OK, Jim Mummery, Paul, I'm going to have to wrap it up there. This is a short, tight 15 minutes on fishing. Less of the Ted Heaths, more of the Margaret Thatchers. We might have a fighting chance. June, we're going to do a fishing special, a coast special next week on Unlocked. Please, I'd love you to come on. You're the Fisherman's you. Queen, Paul Lines, King of the Fishermen. Thank you for coming on Unlocked today. Fishing didn't stop when Brexit got done. We're going to make sure we apply the pressure all the way to the line. It's the least our fishing industry deserves. Thanks for watching Unlock today. We'll see you next time. Martin, Boris is not a bulldog. He's a poodle. <laughs> That's a good note to end on.